Hello there, it's my mate Vince here. Look at a treat I have for you today. We are going to be trying to fix something on this boat. Yes! Now obviously, like all my videos, I don't know nothing about boats and the owner has only just recently got this. So we're both going to be just stabbing around in the dark trying to get something working. So basically, what is happening is these should have something called trim tabs. And I'm not a boating guy, but when you put your foot down, or put your arm down with the throttle, the boat kind of naturally lifts up a little bit at the front when it goes along, so it kind of planes like that. The trim tabs are supposed to then come down at the back to level the boat out. They're run off hydraulics, but apparently one of them's not working and it's blowing the fuse. So basically, Brian asked me, Brian's the guy that lent me the jack and stuff for the car, he asked me, did I want to uh, you know, try to fix it in a video? And I said, of course, because look, it's a boat. So uh, yeah, here we go. So I'm just going to uh, take you inside and show you what's what. All right, check this out. <laughs> look at that. My mate Vince trying to fix a boat. Right, under here, we have the engine. I think it's 5.7 liters, but we'll see that because that's where we're going to be working. Uh, so smaller than the Rolls Royce, unbelievably. And there you have the, the captain's chair. And these are the trim tabs here. You can see uh, there and there. So one works, one doesn't work. And it does say here, trim tabs should be used for port to starboard trim adjustment. Excessive down tab may result in poor handling characteristics. And I don't know what it says after that because it's worn off. But uh, this is quite clever. So look how simple this is here. So apparently you don't really know where the rudder is. Obviously uh, the wheel now is like this, but look, if the wheel was all the way around here, yeah, you're still gonna think that that's straight. But how clever is that? It's just stuck on here. It's not a very elegant solution, but yet it works. And can you see we've gone one segment all the way to the left here. And if I was to go more, so this is like one and a half turns to the left. Can you see it's in between segments there? And then go back. We're now there, so we know now that that's straight. And then if you go to the right, can you see now we're one segment over to the green? Excellent, isn't it? I should know about port and starboard and all that stuff because we used to do that when I was at Cubs years ago. Cub Scout stuff. Uh, this is nice. Look at this. Seat here. Or oh, seat here. Check that out. Uh, I don't really know what to show you. Apparently there's fuses underneath here, so we're going to have to start on that because it is blowing a fuse. We've got the bathroom facilities in there. There's storage and cubby holes and stuff everywhere. So there's sleeper arrangements in there. A nice little window. And your cooking facilities. It's good, isn't it? Lots of storage, microwave, sink. This comes down here, so you can have another bed here. We've got some little uh, windows and stuff around the place. And another bed up here. Apparently that's the anchor in there, but we're on the River Thames here, so that doesn't get... Uh, that doesn't get used. It's good, isn't it? So, basically, these trim tabs are at the back of the boat. Let's just pop outside. Surprise, surprise, it's raining. But they're somewhere down there, and there's two of them. And uh, when I lift up the engine, or when Brian lifts up the engine compartment here, I'll show you uh, what's what. Here we go, I'll do it. He's, uh, he's not here at the moment. But look, look at that beast there. 5.7 litres, Thunderbolt 5 ignition, it's a V8, so four cylinders this side, four cylinders that side, in a V, it's nice isn't it? Battery over there, anyway let me show you these, uh, uh, the thing that controls the trim tabs. It is this thing here, and we have two hydraulic pipes coming out one for either side. So what's causing it to blow a fuse? We've only been told that, but uh, it's not working, but somebody's had a quick look at it and they said that it works on one side. When you go to use the other side, it blows the fuse. So why, what's causing something to blow? So I think to begin with, we need to go to the fuse board. We don't even know what fuse it is. So we need to go across them to see which one's blown. And then I think we need to witness that ourselves and then uh, take it from there. But unless, of course, I don't know, could water have gotten up this high? These things have bilge pumps, so it's not uncommon to have water at the bottom of boats, apparently. But then you have bilge pumps. There's one at the bottom underneath the engine, and then there's another one further towards the front of the boat. Again, the lowest point. And uh, they've got like a float switch, so they come on automatically, or you can put them on. 
and then they're supposed to drain the water out but yeah nice isn't it right so i think we need to work on the fuses to see what's what and then i wonder whether i mean maybe that whole thing will need replacing but it'd be nice if we could actually prove what the problem is okay i'm just on my back underneath the wheel and if you have a look up here this is where the fuses are kept so we need to find out which fuse is blown it's going to be annoying if there's more than one i'm hoping out of all of them there's only going to be one that's blown and then we know that's the one for the trim tabs now we could just look at them closely we might be able to see or we could take them out but you see there's two little bits of metal either side of where it says 15 either side where it says 30 so that's 30 amp 15 amp etc 10 amp we could just get the continuity on our meter and go across either side of them and if it beeps then that should indicate that the fuse is okay. If it doesn't beep, it would indicate it's blown. I'm hoping when we go across the mall, there'll only be one that's blown because then we know that that's gonna be the problem fuse. Right, and just to show you what I mean, so here we have the fuse and metering continuity, so it's gonna beep. And you can hear now when I go across the metal things that it beeps, so this fuse is okay. I'm gonna do the rest of them in situ now. Right, before we test those fuses, I am gonna kill power into there because right now we are going to have 12 volts and maybe you could add it to the comments below are we definitely going to have true continuity through the fuse if we've got 12 volts all over the place so i think it'd be best to kill the power and then 100 percent we know we're just checking the fuse so what's quite interesting brian was just telling me that there's a switch down here and it's got one so it's basically we got off we got one we got two and we got both so it's got two batteries it's got one battery there and another battery just behind there and the idea is that if you're staying overnight somewhere, you would leave that switch to number one, so it's just using the one battery. Then in the morning, you can switch it to number two to then have enough power to start the boat, because overnight you might have been listening to the radio, the TV, etc., stuff like that. And that means you've still got enough power there to start the boat. And then off is what we're going to put it to now. And also there's both, which we think is when you're using the boat, you put it to both, so both of them charge up themselves. So we're just going to swivel this round to off. It's actually on off now. I'll turn it, that's one, that's both. Yeah. Two, and, it, and then off. It's one of those switches that goes all the way. Oh, all right. yeah, cool. Okay, so that's off now. So now we should be able to check for uh, continuity knowing that we're just checking the fuses. Right, so I've got my meter set to continuity. And I'm going to go across each of the fuses. So in this fuse board there's 18 slots and there's 16 fuses in it, there's two empty slots. And out of the 16, 12 of them were testing okay, four of them weren't, but they were actually okay. It's just that they had gone a bit corroded, so when you try to test them in situ using the top two little pins, they weren't making a good contact. And it just so happens on those ones as well, the fuses were quite blackened, they'd kind of gone very dull. So... I think it'd be a good idea to swap them out. Right, just purely because the fuses that I took out there were blackened, I think just, just as a matter of uh, to save any future problems, I think fuses are so cheap, we're just gonna swap the fuses over, uh, all of them that we, that we can change. Now, I will say, because I haven't said it in this video, obviously me and Brian were not professionals on fixing boats. This is the first time we've attempted to do it. So don't copy what you see in this video, just take it purely for entertainment. Okay, so every one of them have been now replaced. Obviously, they're not all going to be faulty. It's just that if you look at them, there's quite a few that were quite blackened. So, I mean, look at these ones here. So, it, they should look all nice and shiny like that. So, I don't think it's going to do any harm to change them over. And I suppose it's understandable that the old fuses would go like that because it is a marine environment. You know, it's even raining now and think about driving around. Things are going to be getting wet and damp. Everything else on the boat is stainless steel. Maybe when it comes to fuses, maybe the quality are all very, very similar. So maybe it's a kind of known issue. Brian was just telling me about the terminology. So on a boat, it's starboard and port. You don't say left and right. So the right hand side of the boat is starboard. The left hand side of the boat is port. And what's interesting is when it comes to the wires, the wires are also port and starboard. So if you have a look in here, can you see that we've got the red wire to the left and the green wire to the right? But yet the red wire is actually port and the green wire is starboard. And this red one corresponds to this pipe here. And these pipes are kind of 
flexible. They're more like plastic. I thought they were metal, but they're not rigid like on the Rolls Royce. They're just plastic. And this one here actually does go down and then it crosses over and it goes into there. And that basically is where one of the trim tabs is. Can you see it going through there? So yeah, the red wire is controlling that one. And then the green, not wire, but the green pipe is then going all the way over, all the way over there and is feeding that trim tab down there so if this is an electrical problem it'd be great because look at all this wiring that's going down feeding into i presume the bottom of the box there there may be some kind of issue with some of the wiring there what's interesting as well is i've never seen these cable ties before they're cable ties with a screw post in them which is nice so now what we're going to do is brian's saying that he thinks you can operate the trim tabs without the engine running so we're just going to uh, put the battery back on and we're going to see which side it is that blows the fuse because we need to know whether it's port or starboard okay so we're going to pop the battery back on now and we're going to see which trim tab is faulty i'll let brian do the honors we'll try it without the engine on Does it normally make a noise, I, I wonder? I don't know, because I've never used them. Yeah. So Should we try it with the engine on, just to see if it makes a louder noise? Should I put the engine bay down, because it's going to be very noisy? Oh, yeah, well, I'll tell you, uh, with the ignition on now, should we try it now, or that? Oh, there we go, I heard a click. I did hear a click as well. I wonder if that's a fuse blowing. Not sure, I thought the click came from over there. Should we, should we start it up just to see if anything happens? Problem is we're not sure how noisy it should be on the outside, whether or not you should be able to hear it moving or not. Right, luckily we just asked someone who's uh, knowledgeable on these things, and apparently you don't have to have the engine running to have the trim tabs work, and they should work independently. And if they're working, you should be able to hear something, because right now we don't know if they're up or down, because the boat's not moving. But saying that, we didn't hear anything moving, but you know, the engine was on and stuff. So uh, we're just gonna mess around a little bit longer now with the engine off, moving these up and down, see if we can hear anything at the actual motor type thing that has the pipes coming out. Brian's just down here and he's just basically, he's got his hand on the motor bit just to see what it's doing. And I'm up here and when we hit this bit here, it's not making any clicks down there. It's not doing anything whatsoever on either one of them. What's interesting is this one returns, can you see? This one doesn't, it's sticking. So obviously that could do with some IPA, isopropyl alcohol or something that I haven't got. And we've also done it just with the ignition on here just to see if it makes a difference. And still it's not clicking. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna measure the fuses again, just in case the fuse has blown from that initial test that we did. Well, okay, checked all the fuses and uh, they're all showing okay. There is two empty spaces, but it doesn't look like there's any wires connected to them. So right now, the fuses are okay. I think just purely because of this thing going on here, I think I'm gonna take off this thing. It looks like we've got two main screws here and then maybe these screws hold on this one and that one holds on that one, just in case. Maybe the switch is not allowing power through to the actual thing that moves the trim tabs. Nearly there. There we go. We have the connections at the back now, so we should be able to work out what's what. The right hand side has two wires, and then it uh, looks like the middle some sort of ground. And then the middle, the left hand side has two wires as well. This is like a buzz bar that connects that one there to the bottom screw terminal. So if you have a look, these two are connected. That one and the bottom one here are connected. And then the two middle bottom ones are connected and this buzz bar across the middle is all connected. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the battery on and now I'm going to check it for 12 volts, see if we can have 12 volts anywhere. Hopefully you can just about make out my meter there. I'm going to go on various different combinations with the ignition off. See if we have anything. No, nope, nothing there. Let's go on to the bottom one. Nothing.
nothing. And nothing. Right, now, we know that the red is port and the green is starboard, so the only other wires we have are blue, yellow, and a massive orange one with a red stripe. Surely there should be 12 volts getting to, uh, getting to, you know, the incoming. There should be 12 volts on the orange, uh, the, between the orange and the blue, or somewhere between the blue and the yellow. Or between the orange and the yellow. There's nothing there at all. There's no voltage getting to this switch. So how can the switch do anything if it's not uh, if there's no voltage getting to it? So I think we need to find out where this massive orange wire goes. You see this one here? Because that looks like it's gonna be the main the main connection, doesn't it? Good news. So the orange wire here goes through there, goes down, and it goes into the floor area here. And then basically I can see a massive orange wire down here next to the battery with one of those inline fuse holders. So when we were told that the fuse were blowing, we automatically assumed it was a fuse under there. But maybe it's nothing at all to do with that. Maybe it's the one down there. So I'm just going to jump down there now and let's measure that fuse because that goes straight to that battery. I haven't measured it yet, but look, it goes to that battery there. Now to begin with, we thought both batteries are going to be connecting together, but they're not, are they? Because why would we have it on number one and number two? So I think what we should do is before we even check the fuse there, let's put it to number two here, sorry, both here. So now that should be connecting up both of the batteries because if this is taking its power from there, then I'm thinking that unless it's on, you know, if that's the number two battery, I don't know which is one and two, but if that's the number two and we've got it just set to number one, then maybe it's not going to energise that circuit that needs to energise those little trim tabs. Right, okay, so now let's just see if we've got any difference in voltage here. Right, as far as I can see, there's still no power getting to there. Let's check that fuse. So I'm just going to turn off the power to the boat just in case I hit something dodgy. There we go. And let's have a look at this massive one here. Well, I can already see that that's blown. So, yeah, there's nothing there at all. So I think the fuse that the previous person was talking about was this fuse here. So I think we need to replace this fuse, then see what side it blows, because that's gonna tell us whether it's port or starboard. And then, uh, yeah, finally, we're, uh, finally, we've made a little bit of progress, right? This is a 10 amp fuse. Right, so Brian's luckily got all the documentation here. This is it, Bennett Trim Tabs Owner's Manual. And we took out a 10 amp fuse, but it does say here, on the diagram here, 35, and 35 here is a 20 amp fuse. But saying that, I mean, maybe maybe you need a 20 amp fuse in if that's what this says, but I think we're gonna put a 10 amp in because that's what was there originally, just to see, because if it works on one side and not the other side, then why would 10 amp be enough Good enough for one side but not the other side so i think we'll stick with 10 amps for a moment but we'll just bear it in mind that maybe we do need to put a 20 amp in there because maybe it's designed to blow if you were to put a 10 amp in there right we've got a 10 amp here i'm just going to make sure that's okay yeah and we're off at the battery still just pop this in there now so we need to turn the battery on and this time we need to see if we can hear something or uh, well hopefully there'll be some kind of activity or life. Really I should check now for voltage at the switch first before I actually do anything shouldn't I just by turning the battery on. Right okay well we didn't have that before 13.2 volts uh, and what down here 13.2 and I wonder does that mean I've got it here 13.2 and 13.2, so we've got 13.2 everywhere. So now I think we need to turn this on and see what it does. Okay, we're about to turn it on now. I'm gonna get Brian to do it because it's his boat, just in case something explodes. But uh, what's a bit confusing is we know that the left-hand side is port, which should be red, but yet the red wire is actually coming up on the right-hand side here. 
down at the bottom there. And then the green wire, which is starboard, is on the left. So that's a little bit confusing to me because I would have thought that this on here would have been port and this would have been starboard. But anyway, right, we're going to uh, do it now. So obviously we've got voltage there with the ignition off. So it looks like these trim tabs should work with the ignition off. So we're just going to do one to begin with. Should we do the left? Okay. And see if it blows. Let's go up first. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Hopefully you can hear that noise. Right, that's definitely done something. Should we go down? Right, so it's not going down. I wonder why that is. Okay. Try go, try well, one second. Try going up again. Right, so it's not doing anything now. I wonder is that could it be blown or maybe the switch doesn't work properly. Should I try the other side? Yeah, yeah. Right, so that's not doing anything. Right. So I think now maybe the fuse is blown. So we'll check the fuse and if it has blown we'll put a new fuse in and then we'll see whether this side works up and down because maybe this is the side that we need to find out which side is faulty basically you can see quite clearly that that's blown now it could be because it's a 10 amp not a 20 amp because it did work nice didn't it you heard it working and then it sounded like when it got to the top of its level it broke right new fuse in and let's do the right hand side and see what happens nothing right so nothing's happening on the right. Let's measure the fuse again, see if it's blown. Yeah, 100% that's blown. Now, just in case we're chasing something that uh, we don't need to chase, let's stick a 20 amp in there because it does say in the instructions 20 amp. So let's see then if the 20 amp blows then 100% we know that there's definitely, definitely a fault. Okay, 20 amp is now in there. Let's see, I'm sure it's gonna blow again. Let's see here. Oh, there was a movement there, wasn't there? It started there? and then it blew. It started, then it blew. Yeah, I okay. it actuating something and then it, then it blew the fuse. Right now, this is really interesting. In this uh, book here, it says the wire harness. Wire, colours and their functions. So the red is the port valve. The green is the starboard valve. The blue wire is the motor forward pump pressure. Yellow is motor reverse pump retract. And then you've got uh, black on that is ground and orange on helm so helm is basically where the captain sits is the positive so what i'm thinking now is could it be that the motors are not working the motors are blowing do the do the motors work to turn on the valves which allows the hydraulic fluid to whiz around and actually lift up these massive rams or does the rams work first and then the motors do something to pump the fluid not too sure but I think what we should do is disconnect the blue and the yellow wires from that switch and then see if the switch starts to make sense with just the red and the green just in case the switch is still faulty because it seems to be shorting everywhere no matter what I do so if we take a good picture of it we can put it back to exactly how it was but maybe by then disconnecting blue and yellow it might make more sense then maybe we can connect blue and yellow and disconnect red and green we might be able to kind of try to isolate what the fault is from the switches and before we even have to touch this whole unit here I think it is a plan to do about the solenoid and the motors separately but just to keep saving blowing the fuses all the time I think we're going to have a quick look in here because I believe you need to fill this up with fluid anyway so there should not be any uh, pressure by just taking off the top there it might become obvious we might physically see something in there that's corroded or wet oh okay right so they must be there the valves these big things here or possibly the solenoids yeah to open and close for that one open and close for that one right That's okay pump so oh so with the motor is just working one way or the other way like retracting pumping it because it did say pump and retract didn't it mm -hmm. so it's just going to be the one motor so in that motor oh and there's the blue and yellow one for the motor Oh yeah, of course it is. So I think we do need to eliminate whether it's valves or motor. So I think we should turn it on now and see if it blows because we can't see anything there, it's all sealed. Right, okay, so we put a 15 amp fuse in just in between the 10 and the 20 just so we don't waste all the same fuse. Uh, we, so it's just, we're just testing now these solenoid valve things because I've disconnected the motor. We hope that nothing's in sync with each other. Do you know what I mean? That now, now, now it's going to go out of sync, but I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it works like that, but we don't really know. Okay, so we're going to try it now. I'm going to try the left-hand switch first. Oh, the Ben's got to turn the power on. Oh yeah, oh, the battery, yeah. Is it on? 
Is it on both? On right, both so the battery's on both. Here goes, I'm going to go down on the left hand side. Okay, so nothing happened there. You can't hear any clicks, can you? No, I've right. there's a, a bird flying. Try again. <laughs> right, down on the left hand side. Now I'm going to go up on the left hand side. Okay, now I'm going to go up on the right hand side. And I'm going to go down on the right hand side. I think I just heard the fuse blur. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that might be that might be a good thing because maybe then that says the solenoids are faulty. So right, we're going to check the fuse now and see if it's blown. And the fuse has blown. So uh, that says that there's a problem with the solenoids, doesn't it? But again, we don't know because the motors are not connected. So what we're going to do now is disconnect the solenoids. Obviously, we've taken pictures of all this. We're going to disconnect the red one down there and the green one there and connect back up the motor wires and now let's see whether or not the motor will give some sign of life when we do this or will that short out as well and blow the fuse annoyingly managed to drop a screw can't find it anywhere and the only place we can think it's gone is uh, what the odds must have bounced off that black wire and gone down into the pit of despair down there so uh what we've done now is disconnected the port and the starboard wires, so these are the, like the valve solenoid wires, and now we just have the motor ones connected. So once the fuse goes in, we're going to see if, uh, if it's going to work. Right, is the fuse in, Brian? Fuse is in. Okay, do you want to turn on the battery? Battery's on. Tonight. Right, okay, now let's do the left hand side down to begin with. Excellent, did you hear that? Yeah. Brilliant. Left hand side up. Yeah. Excellent. And now right hand side up. Yes. Yeah. And right hand side down. Result. Uh, I'm just going to turn the camera there so you can hear that. I'll have to shout louder. Hopefully you'll hear this. There we go. Result. Right, so that's really good news. It's not the motor that's at fault because you can hear it working now and it hasn't blown the fuse. So it's gonna be one or both solenoids, these things here. So we're gonna take a closer look at these. We don't even know how you can exchange them. Maybe the, uh, I mean, I'm sure they're not gonna be repairable, but it'd be nice if we could prove which one's faulty. Uh, we don't really know how much pressure this is all under so we might have to do a little bit of reading up. We might not be able to just undo them. You might have to somehow release the pressure first. We don't know. We've just thought off probably what you've already thought off. We haven't looked into it anymore, it's only a few seconds later, but we don't know. It would be very unlucky to have the port and the starboard solenoids go, the valves go at the same time. So, and also we did remember, we did hear one working. Why don't we connect up the green one? Because we know that at least we got some movement out of this left hand side. If that one's not connected, then it can't cause any problems. So let's see if the fuse blows when we do all the different connections here, all the different up, down, left and right on the green. If the fuse doesn't blow, that says the green one's okay. Then we will take off the green one and put on the red one and do the same thing again. If the fuse blows straight away, we then know it's the red solenoid that's faulty. So you can see red solenoid disconnected, green connected and the motor connected. So the 15 amp fuse is still the one that's in, we haven't changed that. So we're just going to turn the battery on now. Okay, and let's try, see what happens now. So we're going to go left hand side up. Right, that's doing something. Now we're going to do left hand side down. That's doing something. Right hand side up. That's doing something. Right hand side down. That's doing something. Now, green wire disconnected. Red wire connected. So port is connected. Starboard's disconnected. Let's see now if it's gonna blow as soon as we do it. So Brian, if you hit the battery. Okay, so we're on both. So I'm gonna start with the left hand side up. Right, that's working. Left hand side down. Ooh, that's working. Right hand side up. Hmm, can't really hear anything. It started and then it hit Okay. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, and now it's gone. Right, so 100% now. It's not doing anything. Let's just double check the fuse has blown. Brian heard it, but let's just double check. And there you have it. It's blown. So brilliant. A little bit of process of elimination. Yes, we had to go through probably 50p's worth of fuses, but uh, we've proved that now. So that's really, really good. So I think 
we might as well leave them both disconnected for the time being and now we need to look into whether this solenoid is a thing that you just replace or whether you can take it apart and fix. Apparently these unscrew and I can see that it is willing to unscrew. The problem is we've got all the harness going through there and up to here. So we're just going to undo that and hopefully the, uh, the connector will come loose. Well, I've taken three of them out to make it a bit more accessible. Oh, okay. Brian rang a place and they do have these for sale. I mean, it might be fixable, but I doubt it. They're about £55 and it comes on a little barb. So it comes with the red wire and the connector, just obviously one of the connectors. Now, if you have a look in here, can you see? I'm not sure if it's going to focus, but basically it's like a little barb. If you imagine a fishing hook, there we go. And what you have to do is you have to push that in, like you push in the. Uh, so basically, imagine this is the, the, the prong. There's going to be another bit of metal just sticking where my thumb is now. And then you push the thumb in, and then you can pull it out from the back. Then, uh, if needs be, we can pull the new one in. Right, that came out really, really easy. So can you see it just sticking up here? There. So now we're just going to feed it through. And now we haven't got to worry about trying to undo absolutely everything else. So this is it here. Now, we're not too sure how much pressure is going to be here, so I'm just going to stand back a little bit and uh, undo it. Right, so the oh, so flu has come out. Let's get, let's get a rag and then we can mop it up rather than it's uh, going everywhere. Right, so we're just cleaning it up and now we're going to undo it. So obviously there is a bit of pressure there. too sure how much fluid we're going to lose here. Looks like transmission fluid as well. Oh, here we go. That's not too bad. No. I'll leave the rag there. Yeah, I wonder would it be worth trying to cover that up? Well, mind you, we shouldn't get dirt in there because we're not going near there. But look, if you have a look there now, you can see that it's like red fluid. So we need to find out what fluid that is. And here it is. So there must be something internally that's gone in here. But I just want to have a close look at it just to see if we can work out maybe what's fault. I suppose what's happened is this might be like a ground and I reckon it's failed internally, so the red wire, when it's getting power, is grounding against this, and that's what's blowing the fuse. Now, there is something that's on our minds. We think we've proved the fault there, but the thing is, we haven't really, have we? We've proved the fault from here. It's possible that the wiring between here and here, that when it becomes livened up, that is shorting against something else and causing it to blow. So, I think it would be clever, before we take that apart to see if we can find out the original fault, if we connect up the red wire again, change the fuse, and then I'm going to mess with the switches up and down just to make sure it doesn't blow the fuse. If it doesn't blow the fuse, we know then the wiring's okay and 100% that's faulty, but right now I'm not 100% sure that that is at fault because the wiring here could be shorted against a ground negative somewhere. Right, okay, battery's on, let's just make sure. Yeah, now let's see if it's going to blow this time. Remember, the, the connection's not on, the actual the, the connector block but still this is going to prove if the wire in itself is okay. Right, okay, so that should have blown it by now. So now what we're going to do is turn the battery off and check the fuse. Right, okay, pop the fuse out and the fuse is okay. So 100% it is definitely that thing now and we can say with confidence that it is that and not the wiring. Well, we've just put this back together here because I don't think we need to get in that anymore and also sorted this out by just giving it a bit of a clean just around the edges like that because there was a lot of the white fibre stuff here which I don't know if it's dust or just corrosion and uh, also by loosening up the screws a little bit and wiggling it around you can now see I think it was fouling against the surround now it's not staying down that's good Right, okay, we're back on the blue mat now, and I did whack this off, and basically this is what I was greeted with on the inside. This here, and a screw on it here. So it all looks really well made. All the wires look like they're encased in epoxy, so I can't really see how it's failed, but I have found one thing, and this could be the problem. Let me zoom in. If you look here, can you see some of the wires have come over this bit here? So you can see this is all nice and encased, but when we get this bit and put it in, can you see that some of them would have leaked over? And it's possible that they might have shorted onto this bit. When they short onto this bit, this is in contact with here, with the nut and everything, and then uh, it's gonna be in contact with the outer one here. That's all I can think that's happened. I think when it was being made, that maybe this has kind of squidged out with some wires in it. 
I'm not too sure you can put it down in the comments what you think. That's the only thing that I can see that's wrong. So uh, yeah, so Brian's ordered up a new one. Hopefully we shall be collecting it tomorrow. We can get it in and hopefully it's gonna be working. There may be problems with the hydraulics, we don't know, but there's definitely was problems with the electrics that is down to this solenoid thing here. It's the next day now and we have the spare port solenoid. So we're just gonna pop this in and then hopefully we will have some kind of movement. So here it is and you can see it's got the same piston in it and also it's got that little one here, the little barb thing that you can just push in. So it's going to be easy to push in because you push in it, it's harder to take out. So all we have to do is screw that in and then uh, run that down the back, run it through some cable ties and just slot it back into the connector and that's it, a really easy job. So we've got it screwed on now, fed it back behind and now we just need to put it into the little connector. That's clipped in nicely. Has, isn't it? Yeah. So now we have to put the connectors together and just cable tie it back up. Right, so it's now back on. We haven't put the cover on yet because we don't know if we need to fill up with liquid. And uh, you can see it's back cable tied to the wall. We are going to get one more cable tie just to uh, neaten that lot, lot up a little bit. But we've taken a picture of what it says here. And it says to fill. Remove the cover, remove black filler uh, plug and then add any type of automatic transmission fluid which we have. But it says here, filter line with trim tabs up. So we don't know if the trim tabs are up or down or what they're doing. So it's a good job we didn't put any water, uh, fluid in that yet because maybe it would have overflowed. Right, so now we've got the battery on both. Let's see if it's gonna work. Now the ignition's not on, but it should work without the ignition, yeah. on, shouldn't it? Okay, that must be up. It's doing something, we'd have to check outside. Go the other way. Oh. That's it, it's because it's all the way up, not yeah. all the way down. So it mustn't have a, a cut off, it must just... just, it, just it just works until you, until you stop it. Because I suppose the idea is you're trimming it as you're driving so you know what it feels like. Yeah, and you've got to do it apparently in short bursts. So oh, okay. You don't, you don't just hold your finger on it apparently. Right. Actually, this bit got cut from the video yesterday, but basically what you can do is you can use these to sort of trim your boat. If there's too much weight to one side, you can use a little bit of trim to try to level out the boat. So it isn't just about kind of like high speed driving, <laughs> sailing, <laughs> but it's about, you know, trimming it left and right. So that sounds like it's doing something. Should we do the other side? You know what? It's getting better now. I've done it more than once. It's oh, okay. Fluid's going for it. Yeah. See? Yeah. Now, do you want me to try the other side? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's excellent. Off. Okay, Maybe it is going to work then. I'll try the other way. Yeah. I think we need to get the GoPro out, put it under water, and see if these things are actually moving. But it sounds promising. Yeah. And it yeah. sounds different now, doesn't it? It's not blowing any fuses either. No. Yeah. Result. Yeah, I think you've got it. That's well done. Mate. Right, I think we'll do a little bit of underwater filming and see if we can spot these things. But yeah, that sounds very promising. Right, we think now, we haven't looked outside yet, we think the trim tabs are up because when we go up with the trim tabs, you can see now we're just only about a centimetre under that line can you just see the faint black thing that line there just under that thick line and when we put the trim tabs in the down position then that reservoir near enough empties because all the fluid must be in the actual rams themselves so uh, i think we're going to get the gopro and just see what it looks like under the water see if we can spot them right so we've got the gopro this hasn't been used in years this is my son's one so uh, yeah we're going to now try to film the trim tabs and then maybe we can hit the buttons and see if the location moves off them How nice is that? So that is the starboard trim tab and you can see it moving up and down and you can actually hear it as well. I didn't think the GoPro would pick that up, but it does. So yeah, definitely movement there up and down. That is a, a, a nice welcome surprise to see that.
and here we have the port side here so the opposite side to the steering wheel and again you can see the trim tab there and look not only can you hear it you can also see it moving as well so what a result this gopro camera really come in use after being just sat in a drawer for the last three years so uh, well happy with that and it's quite nice to have a little bit of different footage on this video rather than just a blue or yellow mat so yeah thoroughly enjoy this one here let's finish up the video okay so that took probably realistically about a dozen goes before we got the footage on both sides and uh, yeah they are both definitely moving what is strange though is the right hand switch here is moving that side there and the left hand switch here is moving that side all i can think is that when you're actually driving the boat that it feels more natural it doing that way with the way it leans or something you would think it would need to be swapped over so not sure about that but 100 percent it's working so what a nice little bit of fault finding in hindsight now i suppose it would have been best just to go to here disconnect the solenoid see if the fuse blew then connect up the motors see if the fuse blew and then you would have known which one it was and then you could quickly work out whether it's the red or the green solenoid at fault but it was a learning curve certainly learned quite a bit and it was quite nice to work our way fault finding there the other way would have been to inject 12 volts straight in to the connector down there because you could have just put 12 volts into uh, each bit of the motor forward and backwards and then each solenoid and then that might have given us a clue straight away then that one solenoid was not working but remember at the very beginning we thought the fuses were under there to do with it so you know it's all uh, it's all learning and the more you do little things like this the more you understand the boat so yeah thoroughly enjoyed it can't show you it actually working in operation because brian's still not quite confident enough he's having lessons at the moment but hopefully if we do some more repairs on the boat if you guys like these kind of videos then uh, maybe we can take it out on the thames at uh, another uh, a later time so yeah a massive thank you to everybody who's got this far in the video if you enjoyed it give it a big thumbs up and we will see you all very soon take care oh i really enjoyed that one there just something so different and just learning a lot about it and also just the places we went to get a solenoid and where we were working everybody was so friendly helpful it was also nice peaceful and relaxing i can see why people are into it now the way this video was filmed and also uh, just because it's not like a, a normal video that i've done i uh, i didn't have a chance to shout out the my mate vince massive so let's do that now apologies that's at the very end of the video my mate vince massive this month ah kitdigital.com Kip Hakes and Max Rokotansky. Hopefully this is going along nicely with the beat of the music. Having Fun Repairs, Will Michaelis. Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeebs.com. DJ VG, Ellis Garber, Pigsy, Kenneth Blenstrop Sorensen, Gabe McCandless, X from 401, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, Daniel Watson and Zeke's C. So hopefully you might see this boat again in the future. The horn is also not working and you do have to have a horn that works. So uh, yeah, rather than using a canned air horn, let's see if we get the horn working in another episode. Until then, I will hopefully see you on the blue mat, the yellow mat, the car or the boat. One of them. Take care. <laughs>